Welcome to the Antigua State College Moodle platform. This video is a tutorial in helping students navigate this Moodle page. Moodle is a learning management system that allows instructors and teachers to collaborate and communicate in an online environment. Let's start by logging in. There are two areas to log in. There's one at the top of the screen. And there's also one at the bottom of the screen. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the second login area. Your login information may come from your administrative department or your IT department. So let's log in. Once you are an enrolled student, your courses will be listed on this page. I'm going to enter one of those courses so you can have a view of what a typical course may look like. We're going to navigate this page showing you areas like the upcoming events, how you navigate on your dashboard, a typical assignment, a typical quiz, a typical forum, and changes you can make to your profile. We also want to look at what your grade book might look like and any other navigational tips. Let's start with the profile. Your instructor may require you to change your profile picture and here is where you can do so. You may click on the picture that's at the top of the page where your login name is or you can go to the edit profile button. So I'm going to use edit profile. It shows me a list of preferences. I can change information about my user account, blogs, and badges. I'm going to click on edit profile. You have the ability to change the description or give a description about yourself. You type in this box and you also have that section for the user picture. There are two ways to change a user picture. There's the drag and drop method and then there's the add method and the add method is like adding an email attachment. Let's do the drag and drop method first. Drag and drop method says that I must first locate the picture which I wish to use and I'm going to be using one of the sample pictures that came along with my PC and from within the folder that contains that picture I can point to and drag and dragging here means holding down my left mouse button keeping it held while moving my mouse to the drop box and you'll notice the move tag once I release my mouse button the file will load and you can proceed to update your profile with additional names, interests, and some optional information like Skype IDs and mobile phone numbers, etc. So here the file has loaded. There are my penguins. Once I am through, I can click the Update Profile button and this will keep the changes. So note at the top of the screen there's the picture of the penguins I've just loaded. Now let's head back to the main page. Let's look at an assignment. Assignment 1. When your instructor does load an assignment for you for submission they will specify what are the requirements for completing this assignment. Once you click on this assignment link, you will see if you have submitted a file at all. That's the submission status. If the file that you did send got graded, that's the grading status. Uh, due dates, the time that's remaining before the due dates would have closed off and when the file was last modified and any comments that may have been made or comments that you can make. 
Now normally you would find the add submission button here and this is your attempt at sending an assignment in. Similar to dragging and dropping the profile picture here, you could have done the same here. But I'm going to show you how to add this submission by using the add button. So I'm going to click on add. I'm going to make sure that I have the upload a file link clicked. And in that window, I'm going to click on choose file. I must now locate the file that I want to send in as my submission. And I'm going to click on it to select it. And I'm going to click on open. You'll notice the name of the file just beside the choose file button. Once I'm sure, I'm going to click on upload this file. And here's the file. And to make sure that the file is sent in for grading, I'm going to click on save changes. And there is the link to the file that I've just sent. If I wish to make a change, I could do so once the edit submission button exists. The instructor may limit you to one submission and one submission only, and you may not have a chance to change the file that you sent in. But you, if you do have a chance to send your file back in again, if you click the edit submission button, you have the ability to select the file and delete it. You can download it to make sure that this is the correct file that you wish to send. And of course, once you would have deleted the file, you would replace it with another and save the changes again. Now let's get back to the main page. Now navigating is a little easier if you look at the top of the window. There's what's called a breadcrumb list. It shows you a list of links that leads up to the last page you would have gotten to. So I need to get back to my course page. And we're going to look at a typical quiz. Now the quiz will tell you how many times you can attempt the quiz. I have one here. When the quiz will begin and when it will end. Those are the open and close dates and how long it will last for. When you are sure that you're ready to attempt the quiz, you will click the attempt quiz now button. Starting the attempt, that's the button we're going to click on. And the first thing you would notice is it, once it is timed, the clock will be running. And that time limit will count all the way down to the time it is sh scheduled to end. You'll also notice that there is a navigation section. It shows you how many questions are in this test. Now some quizzes may show all questions on one page. For example, all 1 to 20 or 1 to 25. Or some may show only five questions per page, and once you get to the fifth question, you'll have to click next to move on to the next set. Some may even show one question per page. Navigation may also be sequential, meaning you can only do the test in the order in which you receive it. Or free, you are free to go and skip forward to a new question or go back to another one. So it all depends on the settings that the instructor has put in place. So for this quiz, it's a matter of clicking the answers, what the right answers are. And these are little radio buttons that you're seeing here. So let's say I attempt this quiz and give it the right answers, I hope. And the software is going to grade these for you. The only thing the software does not grade is the essay questions. The essay questions must be graded by the instructor. So I've just clicked on next. It shows me the status of the questions. If I may have missed one, it will display not answered or not attempted. And I can return to that question to go back and put the answer in. So I'm going to click on next again. 
and if I'm sure that I'm finished with my test I can submit all and finish and I should receive a grade at the end of my submission okay so it gives me a summary I have gotten four marks for this particular quiz now if the quiz was open for review meaning that the instructor allows you to go back and see the questions that you've done and see the answers to the questions that you've submitted there would be a review button here and I'm going to head back to the course now all of that information would have gone to the gradebook and we'll see this shortly what about the typical forum now a forum question is posted here it says post your feelings on the recent migrant and refugee crisis in Syria I now must add my response to that question by clicking the add a new discussion topic button and I'm free to state my feelings about the Syria crisis and I state as much or as little as I think uh, or based on requirements that this activity forum is going to ask for when I'm sure that I'm finished with my post I'm going to click the post to forum button I have 30 minutes in which to edit this if I want to make changes after that 30 minutes that information becomes permanent now my forum question my forum answer has been posted and others are actually free to reply to my forum post if they choose to do so I'm going to head back to the main page and let's take a look at the attendance okay now the instructor would have set up the attendance record in such a way that it records the class sessions that are scheduled for the term and your record will show you all those relevant dates and whether you were present and how many times if you were late and how many times excused and absent and of course you can always query the instructors to the record uh, based on what was input heading back to the main page upcoming events now this section allows instructors to make sure that whatever is current or whatever is due is visible to the students it shows what event the days and the times and I suggest to students that they take this information and using their smartphones input that information into their calendars and add reminders so that they never forget that the quiz is due or an assignment is due or they have to respond to a forum now this upcoming events block may not necessarily be at the top it could be anywhere on the navigational section of the page and you may even find a calendar that might be input by the instructor to also give your reminders to what days and times assignments are due but what of the gradebook your gradebook is found in the administration administration block I'm going to click on grades and it should show you the categories that your gradebook contains I have a quizzes category and that quiz one that I just did and the score that I would have received I have an assignments category and the assignment one I have not received a grade yet I also have a midterm category and a final category and you, it will tabulate and calculate for you as you begin to receive grades for the activities that you're doing heading back to the main page here are some navigational tips some instructors may turn on what's called an activity completion and this allows the instructor to give students an idea as to their progress 
some boxes may be blue and some boxes may be green. Here's the difference. The blue boxes are the ones that the student can tick off themselves. So for example, if I did open the research methods document, and I know I did, then I will tick off the box myself. But for the green boxes, if I never submitted the assignment and never got a grade for it, this box will never receive a tick. See, I just did this quiz, so I've gotten a tick for that. So the difference is the blue boxes are the ones that the students tick themselves, and the green boxes are the ones that must be completed based on the requirements set up by the instructor. Another navigational tip. If you want to see the other students participating in the course with you, there is the Participants button. And that allows you to see all the other participants in the course. It even shows you when the last time they accessed the course as well. Students are actually free to message individuals by clicking on the name and clicking on the message tag and send a message to the individual or even the instructor as well. And you would send that message off. Still on navigating. The navigation block on the left side of the screen is also a good way to see what each topic, or in this case, or each week has to display. Now, because my topic one is the only one that has information in it and the others are empty, I would not be able to give a very good example as to, you know, opening the other topics as you would display them on the screen. But um, that's the, the aid that this navigation section should give. Once there's information there, you can click on Topic 4 and see a list of the information that's on the, that topic. At the end of the page, there's a latest news block. And if there was something new posted by the instructor, it will probably show up as a news item. Now, this area at the top of the screen, just above the breadcrumb list, is also part of the navigation. The My Classes link shows you all the classes that you may be enrolled in. The My Dashboard allows you to see your profile, check out the calendar, see any messages that somebody sent you, and the private files if you posted some yourself, and a logout option. And this online environment is powered by Moodle, the learning management system that allows students to view activities and files, take part in forums, post assignments, take quizzes, and interact in this online environment. Now, of course, when you are through, we do prefer that students actually log out of their accounts with the logout button until they are ready to log back in another time. This is the end of the Moodle tutorial for the Antigua State College.